Hello Speaksters and welcome back to another episode of Spirit and Law. This is episode 4 and today we're going to be talking about the Kitsune. Now while I'm recording this, it's actually Thursday, or should I say Folklore Thursday, where there's a certain folklore tale which is shown to everybody. So today I chose the Kitsune because I want to say that I absolutely love the Kitsune. Kitsune is actually a Japanese word for fox. And these foxes are always known as a common subject of Japanese folklore. So they're actually known as these benevolent beings that have paranormal abilities. And every time they get older, they get stronger. And there's also a reference to Pokemon in this, which is a little bit strange bringing in Pokemon in the podcast. But Nine Tales is actually a kitsune. And a lot of the stories around how many tales the kitsune has is in relevance to how powerful it is and it's a common idea that a lot of the kitsunis have nine tails so that is probably where they got the majority of inspiration for nine tails which is the evolution of Vulpix. so let's go back to where these myths come from and what exactly these foxes do now some believe that they have the ability to trick other people's and all of that and so forth and that they can betray themselves as someone else they can actually shapeshift and become maybe a lover or a friend or someone that you're close to and some people believe they can be quite bad but then on the other side of the spectrum a lot of people have believed to live with the uh, foxes in Japan and there's like a deep companionship between the two of them so they believe like the the fox is actually a good sign a good spirit a good messenger and that they're there to protect because they have so much power and some people even actually sacrifice things and see them as a god they were actually also known during the superstitious Endo period, which was 1603 to 1867, as witch animals because of the powers that they possessed and the ability to shapeshift. What's really interesting is that even now today, at uh, certain celebrations in Japan, like weddings and different festivals, they actually have fox fire lanterns because it's believed that some of these kitsunis have the ability to create water or fire also. But as I said, because they're seen as so powerful and so wise, they're also seen as quite cunning because they're foxes and incredibly dangerous too. Now, when they start off, the idea and the the folklore that I've been reading says that they start off as like little, little, little pups or cubs and they easily kind of blend in with other foxes. You never know they had these powers and so forth, but like over time, their tail starts to grow a new tail. And then, as I said, this can grow up to nine tails. And the more years, the more they start to change in colour also. And, once again, I know this links in with Pokemon, but their final form is to turn into a a white fox with a white tail with nine tails. And when I mention shapeshifting, now when this only happens when they get to, I think, 50 or even 100 years of age, then they have the ability to transform into humans. Now they can shift into men, women, young, pretty ladies, little boys... And basically, they can have the ability to deceive. It depends what the Katsuni is like. If its nature is to be malicious or its nature is to be kind. And it's also believed, there's a superstition that came from this, that if you encounter any lady that's on her own, around dusk, the time of the day when foxes become active, that the lady is probably a uh, Katsuni herself. Now let's talk about a bit of a dark story with the Kitsune and one occasion where one has been seen as deceiving and so forth. Because they have so much power and the ability to deceive man, they can actually be... Let's let's, let's just say they can change into somebody and they can cause havoc. Absolute havoc. And there's actually a lot of old paintings and so forth back in Japan which shows a lady and a maiden. I think it's... um, a certain story, I'm trying to think, uh, 
was about the Indian prince Banzuku, I think that's how you say it, was being tortured by and tormented by a nine-tailed um, fox who wears the garments of his lover, Lady Kaor. I hope I'm saying all these words right. Now, we don't know if the uh, lover was possessed by the spirit or something else, or the fox just changed into the lover. But this is one of those occasions where it's been seen that the same spirit of the fox ended the dynasty and maybe got rid of the lover, basically. Um, yeah, I just realised I'm pronouncing it wrong. It's Kitsune. It's not how I was saying it before, so it's Kitsune. Um, now I want to mention, although we don't really know about the tradition of the popular fox and, you know, everything that happened, in popular culture we seem to have lots and lots of references. So let me tell you some popular culture references to Kitsune or Nine Tails. So, in the video game League of Legends, one of the playable characters is Ahri, the nine-tailed fox. She appears as a beautiful woman fox with fox ears and nine fox tails tails who seduces men so they may come and she can consume their souls and steal their memories so this is based on the folklore idea that the fox is always seen as a maybe you know a bit of a deceiving lady that takes on the power of men um the other one which i mentioned before is the name and the appearance of pokemon nine tails based on the nine-tailed fox in the Naruto franchise, the Beast Kurami, I'm probably not saying this right, the Beast Kurami is based on Nine Tails Fox. In the video game Okami, one of the boss's games is called Nine Tails, who in the game disguises as the priestess Ryo, once again a beautiful young lady who has direct access to Queen Himiko. Uh, we also have it in uh, the game Sonic the Hedgehog. Tails is actually designed off of nine-tailed fox. So there's always been that fascination, in a sense, with this fox, and it's appeared here and there, and in a term, you know, it's just everywhere, basically. Um, Kitsune is, is pretty much just splashed in here and there. Now the question is, do you think Kitsune is uh, a bad fox? Or a good fox? Or what do you think? Do you think it just it's seen as a thing that is misguided or seen as a, a creature that's actually a guardian and actually powerful and seen to help others, not just itself? Because uh, there's a lot of other stories where, for instance, we got the Kelpie, which I spoke about a few few episodes back, and how the Kelpie transformed into a beautiful maiden. There's always, it seems there's always a connection between a beautiful young woman which takes away a man. Now, do you think that's always the case, or is that just being kind of added in as this kind of, <gasps> what's the worst thing a lady can do, and stuff like that? Um, yeah, I'd love your feedback, comments, and what do you think, really? I'm just trying to look through what else there is about the Kitsune that I can talk about. I forgot to mention the Kitsune, I'm always going to say the name wrong, actually feeds off the souls. I, I completely missed that out. <laughs> they are kind of like vampires, but they they... they they feed off the souls of humans. And they get more and more powerful with each soul that they devour. That was, um, that should have been put in. I think my main take from this is I absolutely love Nine Tails. <laughs> it's a beautiful, mythical creature. I just would love to know more of the origin and where, where someone got the idea of Nine Tails and so forth. I've tried to look at the origin and where it came from and there isn't much to go by, only that this is a mythical wolf witch that has powers and the ability to shapeshift. So does anyone else have any ideas of where this could have come from, where this concept and idea could have come from? Uh, yeah, and uh, I think that's us done with this episode. Thank you everyone for listening to this episode, and I will see you next time on Spirit and Law. Bye-bye. Spirit.